This is my local Starbucks. Well, a smaller version of my local Starbucks. And in this video, I'm gonna blow it up. <laughs> Movies will use miniatures for this type of thing sometimes, but they have huge Hollywood budgets and a visual effects team. I don't have those things, but I think I can still make the explosion look believable by building an exact replica of my local Starbucks. They got my name wrong one time. My name's Preston. Frame the shot correctly so the building looks full size, then somehow blow it up perfectly because we will only have one shot to get this right. Step one, build the Starbucks. So yeah, I don't know if I can. <laughs> I wanna shoot a scene like you'd see in a movie that leads up to the Starbucks exploding. But for the explosion to feel real, I'm gonna need to interact with an actual Starbucks building in real life to basically give some level of context before the small one explodes. That means our mini Starbucks has to be an exact replica of a real Starbucks building. To explain why we need an exact replica, let's look at this video. Uh, if you never saw this jumping scene right here, the ankle breaking is even less believable. So in a similar way, seeing an actual Starbucks building before the miniature one blows up will hopefully sell the illusion. Unfortunately, if I were to build it, it would look like this. But then last night I found this video, literally thought it was a real cabin when I saw the thumbnail at first. This guy makes the most realistic miniatures I've ever seen. So right now I'm asking him to build it because I don't think I can. Yeah. Sending in three, two, one. He said yes. 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 Can't believe he made all this using the Google Maps address. Wow, this is crazy. Basically two months later, he sends me a 40 minute video of him building this oh thing. Oh my gosh. Dude. The detail that he put into the build itself was probably the most mesmerizing part. He's even making the sidewalks look realistically dirty. I linked that video in the description. Please go watch it after this one and subscribe to his channel, which is appropriately called Small World. I love that. Carson. You're a magician. What I didn't think about till maybe halfway through the build was the fact that I'm in LA, but Small World is in Seattle. So I reached out to you guys asking for delivery help, and my new friend Edwin volunteered to do the long haul and get the model here in perfect condition. He also delivered me a coffee all the way from the original Starbucks, which was hilarious. Please spam thank you, Edwin, in the comments. We threw it in my car, and the next day, it was time for the accuracy test. All right, we are two minutes away from the real life Starbucks. We have the model in the back. We brought it because the only thing I gave Small World was the address. That's it. So I was a little nervous that it may not look exactly the same. And boy was I wrong. second we decided to go inside just to see if this gave anyone else the chills. You like it? Oh my God, it's it's, it looks just like it. Right? Our job here was done and the final piece of the puzzle had just been delivered to my front door. The building is built in 124th scale. I still don't really understand what that means, but I knew that the toy Tesla needed to be the same scale in order to fit with the building. The plan was to incorporate the car into the movie scene somehow, because there's something about seeing a car next to it that just adds to the believability for me. But before we could start shooting, we needed to know how we were going to shoot it, because the angle of the camera can totally make or break the illusion which is why we went to the park to see if we could pull off the filmmaking technique known as Force perspective, which means selective Framing where small things seem big If you walk away like I'm doing The sad part is I'm fully convinced that I'm Leaning on the Tesla Now I think I'm leaning on the Starbucks, but I'm not Struggle. This looks bad. But Daniel is so far away. I can't hear any of his constructive criticism. Why isn't this working? But this really isn't working. This camera may be too much. It's gotta be closer and low. Maybe we try the GoPro. Oh my gosh, 
much, so much more believable, right? But getting the camera this close to the explosion kind of throws a huge wrench into our plan. We were planning on shooting the explosion in super slow motion with a very expensive, very borrowed camera. So putting it right next to an explosion just isn't really an option. Which is why I decided to run all of this by a Hollywood stunt guy known in the industry as Tyler Stunts. Stunts. I'm, I'm actually not sure if anyone else calls him that. He specializes in Hollywood explosions and was gonna help us with ours. He's also known for Tyler Stunts. His suggestion was to do a high pressure explosion, which would allow us to keep the cameras as close as possible and also maintain force perspective. perspective. Yeah, that didn't really, that didn't really work. Stunts. Also explained that we needed to build something to put inside the Starbucks in order to control the blast. We need the blast to go out. We don't want it to go out. And since I recently learned how to weld, we decided to pick up a few pieces of steel and design this contraption ourselves. We also picked up this big piece of plywood that would serve as our parking lot and went home to get this thing prepped to get blown up the next day. After an hour of sketchy welding, it was done. I call it the blast deflector. The pressure explosion will come up through this hole. The blast deflector will be screwed down on top of it. Then the blast will travel up through the bottom of the deflector, out the sides, hopefully blasting the sucker to smithereens. All we have to do now is just be really careful not to break the model. I broke the model. Thank goodness for super glue and for Katie who painted some very believable looking parking spot lines, which was the last thing we had to do because all of a sudden it was game day. I'm gonna blow this thing up. Not only were we excited to blow this up, we were also excited about who was doing it with us. Enter Gene, also known as Potato Jet. Camera enthusiast, FPV master, and all around great guy. He would be joining the team as our slow-mo camera operator. He was also kind enough to drive us in his super cool van that had this bed that dropped down from the ceiling. The model ended up fitting perfectly in there, and once we were all packed up, we began our journey into the desert. It felt like a safe place to blow something up, and having mountains in the background of the shot would hopefully further sell the illusion. What we didn't expect was this. That, my friends, is wind. Sure, sure, right. oh. gotcha. Since we actually only had one shot to get the explosion right, we couldn't risk the model or the explosion being affected by the wind at all. So we scouted for like an hour looking for a better location when we found this huge water pipe. It was actually crazy how much wind was blocked as long as we stayed super close to the pipe. One could say we found the perfect spot, which meant it was time to set up the camera. And because this camera cost $18,000, I did encourage the guys to just maintain a general level of professionalism when using it. Yeah, after looking back at our really important test footage, we realized that at a thousand frames per second, we could record for one second and get 41 and a half seconds worth of footage out of that one second. Oh, that's so crazy. Almost as crazy as time is done. We have Tyler here. He is our safety professional. We would not be able to do this without time is done. Do not try this at home. I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> what is this, Tyler? This is an air mortar. These are used in the simulation of explosions for military training. And then this, this right here is nitrogen? That nitrogen would power the air mortar that we would put underneath the parking lot that would shoot up into the blast deflector and blow this thing to smithereens. We loaded the cannon with cork chunks as well as dust to simulate the debris that would shoot out during an explosion. Just in case something went wrong, we had four cameras all shooting different angles since we could only blow this up once. After we got the Tesla in place, we were basically ready. We're gonna blow this up. This is amazing. Whoa, this is so it looks dude, crazy. All the, all the freaking work. And our mini movie would obviously all lead to this moment. So naturally, I was feeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm really nervous. <laughs> yeah, it got very quiet. You guys ready? I'm rolling. Cover your mouths, eyes set. Rolling. Right. Ten. Blow it. Three, two. Talk to me. Dude, come outside. Like right now? Yes, come outside right now. Okay, okay, I'm coming out. Okay. I did it!
I got a Tesla. Oh my God, dude. I know, I know, I can't believe it. Do you know how many girls I'm gonna get uh -huh. because my boy owns a Tesla? I am Elon Musk. I am immortal. We own a Tesla. No, you. Yeah, me too. And you. Bye bye, gasoline. <laughs> right? Tessie for life. Tessie. Tesla. T E Tesla. S. Right? So, like, now what? Um. Starbucks! Tonight! No, I couldn't be a bomb, right? We're at Starbucks. Oh, that's a bomb. Guys, what y'all trying to do? That's that's fire. That's definitely fire. There's fire now. Oh my gosh, we're headed right toward it. I'm really scared right now. I am too. Ah. Keep up! So many pretty girls around me and they're waking up the rocket! Keep up!